Now you listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Hallelujah. Y'all can hear me now, can't you? I can hear me. Abba, y'all, we do thank you for all things. We ask your blessings up on today's service. Hearing of our ears, we need it. Prepare our hearts and our minds to receive this message, to encounter the Hasatan's kingdom, and to tear it out, tear it down, to root it out, to destroy it. Equip the saints of the Most High God with knowledge and understanding, only that the performance thereof. We magnify your magnificent name. We glorify you. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. And our name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. We'll carry this message out. The sinners may be converted and your name be exalted in all the earth until your return. In the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach, Amen. All right, go, sir. Dear Pastor Dow, my husband and I have listened to many of your videos for a while now, and it felt led to reach out to you. We began our journey of truth in the Israelite faith about three years ago. Yah has given us a wonderful testimony as we grow in faith. We really don't have any others in our family that believe what we believe. We do hold a small Shabbat assembly. However, those that attend do not fully have eyes to see as of yet. We wanted to contact you regarding your community. We were instructed to move out of the city by the Most High and have moved to a temporary home and now have to find our own land. We are renting a place in the country now. We would love to visit to get a better understanding of how a true community functions and to fellowship with true Israelites. Also, regarding your deliverance services, my dad and my brother both are afflicted with mental illness. My brother has what the world calls schizophrenia. My dad has severe depression, paranoia, anxiety, etc to the point that he can't work because voices tell him to drive his 18-wheeler off the road. Watching your testimonies of deliverances are so encouraging, and I feel their lives will be blessed and their minds healed by experiencing the true power of healing through deliverance. We thank you for your time and hope to hear from you soon. And if it's the Father's will, we hope to visit you all. Sincerely. Hey, um, there is a mental illnesses that are going on today. And 99% of them haven't been diagnosed. Uh, there are a lot of mentally ill persons, people sitting right in here. They just don't know it. But um, come on down and visit. Sounds like you're doing, you want to do the will of the Father, don't it? Yes, sir. Sounds like it. Um, most people, they simply don't get it. You can't tell how if someone really truly fears y'all by what they say, you have to pay attention to what they do. You follow me? And that's right. If you do continue to keep listening to me, um, if you follow the right way, you will have peace in your homes. You will. I have too many people, too many people in, in this ministry that has done what the Preachings and the teachings according to this word says and they are eating the fruit thereof. But it came at a price. The devil is real. And he's going to fight. Yes he will too. Every step of the way he's going to fight. But you experience peace provided that you have the spirit of truth to follow this word. Not turn to the right or to the left. Are you following me? Yes, sir. 
He said he'll give perfect peace to all them whose what? Mind. And if you keep his law, you'll have peace and you won't be offended. I'm just paraphrasing this to make it simple for people to understand because, you know, quoting scripture just ain't getting it today. You know what I mean? It makes nothing spiritual about anyone today. But, you know, if you can do the performance, if you can live this thing, really truly live it, um, you'll get it. You will get it. Go ahead and the next one, Sister Ashley. Just watched your video on KJV versus NIV, versions of the Bible. Very powerful, dear brother. Thank you for sharing it with us. I've been reading the NIV since about 1989. Whew. Just recently began questioning the version, and I'm now doing a comparison between the two. Again, thank you. Godspeed and Godspeed to you and your ministry. 24 years. And he probably just came across that, that the whole verse is missing. And numbers. Now, we know that the scriptures wasn't written with chapters and verses. But since they have it in English, I mean, the audacity of these people to sit there and just skip out whole verses and, and you go mind numb. Reading it. At least you think you are. And you can't catch it. Hmm? That's what religion does. It blinds you. You know what else blinds you? Self-justification. Today's teaching is going to be something else. It's going to be painfully. It's going to be painful, but it's going to be the truth. Let me tell you how you know when something's true. You know, you know, you know, let me tell you how you know when something's true. You know when something's the truth. Let me go the other way. If somebody's lying on you, all you do is get angry or upset. When it's the truth, you go insane. The human, the human, the human sight can't cope for some reason. The truth. You have to have the spirit. Y'all hear that? Now that's a distinct difference because see the old evil Adamic man does not have the spirit of Yah in him. See we're all born in a condition of death. And it, it takes his Ruah coming in in order for you to have life. In order to understand the same spirit that Adam and Eve had to deal with because they, was, they had his spirit in him from the very beginning. Do you understand? And so once you get the spirit of truth, it comes upon you, then you can begin to understand this. But to everybody else, you'll be a fairy tale. They can't understand you. But the NIV has done made its rounds, ain't it? And also the New King James Version. Um, and then if you, when, once you become a student, the King James Version. All right, come on. So that's glad you delivered from it. Burn it. Now, you can't burn the scripture. If it was the scripture, I would say that. But since it ain't scripture, burn it. Burn it down the house. Shalom. I've been watching your videos for some time now, and I'm amazed at how fearless you are concerning answering questions that others would simply give their opinion. After doing my own research, I'm sure you are right about the things you preach. I'm wondering about the subject of plural wives. Is this for our time? I know the patriarchs all had more than one wife. I'm concerned about this subject considering hardly anyone speaks about it. I believe you're a man of Yahweh and Yahweh's own heart, and you will tell me a truthful answer regardless of popular opinion. I will be watching Shabbat service. Shalom. Man, people can be sending these emails by iPhones and everything else. You know what? You, you knew that... Uh, time was coming that these questions were going to start coming forward too, didn't you? The reason why most people don't want to answer is because number one, they're either bound by religion and, and traditions and theologies of men or number two, they're fearful. Well, and we go to number three, they too inept mentally to be able to answer questions like this simply because they lack in scholarship. How'd I do educated people? How'd you, how'd you, hey, man I, man, I feel like a doctor now. <laughs> Y'all getting it? I tell you what, let's just answer this question real quick. Let's cut straight to the chase. How about that? Huh? Question number one. Do you believe what Yahweh says? I didn't say the prophets. 
I didn't say the apostles. Do you want to know the mind of Yahweh in this subject? Now, don't get me wrong. If you choose to be like Isaac, you can. Matter of fact, only about 20% of this world lives that way. And most of them are dominated by European nations. Bet y'all didn't know that. Monolygamous. You, this is a monolygamous society. But I will submit to you, it's amazing because if you know history, there used to be a time that there was separation, I'm going to use the words we, it's easy to understand, okay, of church and state. The state did not get into the church business because the assemblies had that much power. And that's why when they drafted the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence, they knew that they had to word it in such a way and frame it in such a way because just like our Supreme Court today, they had to have nine of them. And the reason why they have nine of them because people are going to judge based on what they believe and stick humanity in there whether you like it or not. And some people are convicted by certain things and other people are not convicted by other things. That's why they always, they seem like every time they judge, FIFO, 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 seems like that. So when they drafted this constitution, they had the same thing in mind. Except these were men of conviction somewhat. When you look at their lifestyles, you can, you can see that they didn't believe in what they said. Thomas Jefferson. He got his name big on the Constitution. His, now his name is big on there. And John, Thomas Jefferson had a wife and how many concubines? Well, y'all call them maid servants or whatever. And he had a whole bunch of them. George Washington. All, all these framers that, that you people put so high regard. Bill Clinton. And the whole entire Senate and Congress that you know nothing about. These people don't believe in, in what they say. They got you to see. You pay attention to what they're doing. Now let's get back to the answer though. Let's get back to the answer. We believe what the father says, right? Now it's obvious that, now you have to understand, I believe the book. <clears throat> I don't care what society says. Society is, is trying to define for us what morality is and the Supreme Court just got finished legalizing five more states to allow sodomy, sodomized, sodomy marriages to take place. I can't fall up under that kind of uh, morality or judgment. Because the book says that sodomites are going to burn. That is against nature. See, but that's the laws of the land. They also legalize bestiality too. I think it's Nevada and bestiality is legal. All this done by your state. A mess, isn't it? Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to take a, uh, a platonic mannequin format. Because we, people don't understand it. What's going on because it hasn't been told to you. You have not been exposed to truth. You've been exposed to what the drafters and the framers are the ones who conquer lands give you. And you just assume that your mind is shaped right. And what I do is I challenge you. I draw a line and challenge you intellectually to a showdown of the book. Y'all would never ask me to represent my opinion. He told me to represent his truth. Is that right? So since many people are having difficulty believing the patriarchs, the framer, the framers of the law, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, you know, all these, these men that we love so much. At least we say we do. But many of you are going to find out that what, this is what you're looking for in salvation. You want salvation. That's what everybody wants. Hmm? But you don't want to obey his law. You want to live the way you want to live. You want a God after your own mind. That's what got Israel in trouble. 
Because see, all the other nations, they look at all the other nations, they had a plethora of gods, in them, and it seemed like them gods let them do whatever they wanted to do. But as Israelites, we've got laws. We're not afforded the opportunity to go out and... Our, 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 our Elohim tells us, this is sin. Don't do it. And this is not sin. You can do this. And he warns us. But the nations have no warning. Do you understand? Go to 2 Samuel chapter 12, starting at verse 7, brother, saying, we're going to see what Yahweh has to say. And what he says, settles it. Is that right? We're going to skip the prophets. We're going to skip the apostles. We're going to skip all the, everybody else's theologians, the popes, the bishops, the ministers, the theologians. We're going to skip all. We're going to go straight to the Father and see what he says about it. How about that? All right? Now, the setting is this is King David having an adulterous affair with Bathsheba. Yes, now we're going to find out what the father, not only what he believes about a man having more than one wife, but we're going to find out what he believes about murder and adultery all in one shot. Yes, Is that all right? Yes, we can't spend all day on this because I got, I got to get busy, bro. I'm telling you, we got a message to go. 2 Samuel chapter 12, start at verse 7, brother Saint. Read, listen to the book. And Nathan said to David. What did Nathan say to David? Thou art the man. You are the man. Thus said Yahweh Elohim of Thus Israel. Thus said who? Yahweh Elohim of Israel. Who said this? Not this is my own opinion and I think that I have the spirit of the most high Yah. Thus said Yahweh the Elohim of Israel. It's amazing how all the nations all of a sudden they want to adopt everything that it, our, our commandments and laws say, but they don't want to obey it, though. Isn't that amazing? Everybody want to claim to be Israel. They want to claim to be Hebrews, but they don't want to obey. This is thus say of who? Yahweh. The creator. The God of Israel. The real Israel. Not these Ashkenazi, worn, torn, Khazar, and Jews. The Yah of Israel. Thus saith. See, that's what we're not getting today. Everybody said, oh, Lord told me, so Baal told you. I believe it. But I don't hear thus saith Yahweh. Do you? I don't never hear these, all these prophets never saying that. But we're getting a clear cut. Thus saith Yahweh Elohim of Israel. Let's see what he says. You think it's important? All right. I anointed thee king over Israel. Who did it? Who anointed David? Who anointed Dawid? Yahweh. Yahweh did. It amazes how he always reminds us of what he has done for us. He, he always does it, don't he? He reminds us of what he has done. Now look at here, boy. <laughs> I anointed you huh, to be king over my people. Read on. And I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. I am the one who delivered you out of the hand of Saul, the first king of Israel, or captain. That's what Brother Vernon said. <laughs> huh? I'm the one that delivered you from his hand. I mean, Saul was a bad dude, man. He could take a spear and javelin. Whoo! We, we don't have them kind of skills today. Everything's fire on, pow, pow, pow. Reach out and touch, but it, he could take a javelin and probably nail a flea to the wall. Y'all said, who did the delivering though? Read on. And I gave thee thy master's house. I gave you Saul's house. Read on. And thy master's wives. I gave you Saul's wives. And to thy bosom. And, and also some other people's wives. He gave to David. Who said he gave? Yahweh. Now you think I give a damn about what you think? Or does he care about what you think? He said I anointed you to be king. I delivered you out of the hands of Saul. I gave you your master's house. I gave you your master's wife. Boy, this Y'all's there to give her every good gift, didn't he? Yes, hallelujah. Yes, sir. Every, every, every. This sells it all right here. 
You can look behind every word, theolize, theologize, yagulize, what do you buy, he buys all you want. Sister Britton, I'm not challenging you, I'm an analytical mind y'all got. But you understood my language, right? This is the king of, 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 and the maker of every one of us speaking right here. Read on. And gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. I also gave you the house of Israel and the house of Judah. That is a lot. Oh, most of us couldn't handle it. Most of you are too prideful to think you could handle it. That's why y'all didn't pick you. Can't handle it. Uh oh. Come on. That's a fact. He couldn't give me all that. I couldn't handle it. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. Not me in my present state. Man, I, he, must, he had to see something in me. He had to anoint. That's a different anointing right there. Read on. And if that had been too little, well, I'd be something. In other words, I have made you king. I gave you your master's house. I gave you your master's wives. Is that right? Yeah, right. Plus Israel and Judah. Right. And if that would have been too little, only thing that we'd had to do was say, Yahweh, I want this. And what did he say, brother, saying? He was what? If had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. I would have given you anything you asked for, yeah. King David. See, y'all don't know him. I keep telling y'all, y'all know y'all were based on the precept of man and the ideas that they have put in your head. Right. Yeah. This is a lot of giving. Yes, it is. Not only this, this is a lot of honor. Now remember the word. To much is given, much is required. And now he talking. Grand entrance. Now, it's already settled that the Father gave the Israelites wives. It makes no difference if you like it or not. Your opinion don't matter. Your opinions are like everybody has one. That's just true. Watch this. Read on. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandments of Yahweh? That's the key right there. He did what? He despised the commandments of Yahweh. You know what David did? He had turned around and brought a reproach upon the king of, uh, upon the, the creator of Israel, the God of Israel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are y'all hearing that? Yes, sir. If David would have said, Father, I want 50 wives, he would have gave them to him. Yeah. If I want 100, I gave you that too. Like if you want another kingdom, I would have gave you that too. Come on. You want the whole world, I would have gave you that too. Mm -hmm. Did he not say, all you had to do but ask? Yeah. And I would have given it to you. If he wanted the head of the Assyrian king on a platter, he'd have gave him that too. See, you don't know him. All you know is your feelings and emotions. As I told you, many of you better just go ahead and run back to Christianity and get ready to lift your eyes up in the eternal hell. Because you can't cope with truth. This is y'all doing this, right? Read on, brother. Shane. Listen to this book. To do evil in his sight. You despise my commandments to do evil in my sight. Read on. What was the evil that he did? Well, read. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite. You have killed Uriah the Hittite. One of your own. Now, wait a minute. David, just like many of you uh, wicked deceivers of today, what you do is you get somebody else to do your dirty work while you sit way back in the background. You set up all these ignorant folk that like being used because they're too dumb to know they're being used. Right. You put voice into them, and, they, and, and then they go do your bidding and will, and then when they get out and get killed and get castrated and murdered and beaten and stuff, you sitting back pretty. Right. But people like me have discerning hearts. I know what's going on. Uh-oh. That's the same thing David did. 
put, put you out in the heat of the battle and then have everybody to withdraw. Would you want to serve a king like that? No, sir. David's a man of war. Normally he's at the battle. Out front, leading the charge. But this time, he had got a temptation that caused him to despise the commandment. That's why I keep telling you. If you want to know what, what uh, taking his name in vain is, go read the Psalms. Read the Proverbs telling you by taking his commandments, spurning his commandments. Not saying, God damn! There ain't a man, a human, or ant, or speck, or an insect that can damn Yahweh. Not even a devil himself. You take his name in vain by despising his commandments. Especially when you say you are an Israelite. And you say you're a commandment keeper. He gonna hold you to it. And David being the king. Now, now this, that's why I don't understand. Why everybody wants to have a calling or some title or something like that. I don't get it. See, you want it, but what if you made a mistake like David? Would you be able to handle his judgment? Mm. Uh -oh. See, you get Google eyes. And, I don't know what you're looking at, but you're looking at something. Right. See, Everybody going, look, they're going to honor me. There's a secret to honor. It's something you can't do. It's called humility. <laughs> Just like gravity. Look, up, down. Right. It's hard, isn't it? It's hard for people to understand the simple things of the Father. Amazing. Simply amazing. Read on, brother. Saying, listen to the book. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and has taken. Now, what does the commandment say? You shall not murder. murder. And then, of course, James the Apostle told us that if you have offended in one point, you are guilty of all. For he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not kill. Now, if you commit adultery, but yet if you don't kill, you will become a transgressor of the law. Just because you broke one of them. Well, I didn't do this. You broke them all. See, we give ourselves a pass, don't we? Yes, we do. Huh? That's that Platonic model. Yes, it is. That's that Western perspective. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. You think you think you're right. You think think you think you think right. Yes, Just because you can conjure it up. Your thoughts is not his word. And man should not live by thoughts, but by every that do what? Well, isn't that something? See, you're not taking issue with me because I have enough power and spiritual authority to speak truth. Because you don't like what I'm saying. I'm just window dressing. I'm a storefront. All of us are storefront. You're really taking issue with him. And you're going to answer for that too. I love to see. I can't wait to judgment day to see something you talk back to the Father. I can't wait. I'm going to go ahead and be arrogant now. Where are you going to be standing at? On the right hand. The goat's going to be on the left. I know where I'm going to be at. Listen to the book. Read. And has taken his wife you to have be taken, thy wife. Up, up. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And has taken his wife. So he doesn't Killed, and he done committed adultery. Is that right? And think about this: both of them are sins against man. But well, Yah is taking it out the whole entire. Remember, on these two commandments hang the whole law. First four had to do with Yah. Last six had to do with your fellow man. And that both of these sins are sins against your fellow man, your neighbor. Is that right? Read on. And has slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house. Because you have did this, David, you killed. What does the law say? An eye for an eye and a two for two. Don't it say that? 
that's right. Stroke for stroke. Is that right? So now wait a minute. He's the same yesterday and today of ever, right? Now, now wait a minute. Let's think about this for a second. Man, I want to get going, but we really got to think about this, though. Today, people get away with capital, capital fences. Today, look at the model of the United States of America. You did any of this, I promise you, you would get three squares and a cot. Air condition and heat. Yeah, you will. And you'll get locked up from the people that should be able to take judgment out of on you. You are protected. That's why they snatch you up real quick and throw you in jail. Well, I don't know about that perspective. You don't know nothing too much of nothing anyway. Because if we was able to do it according to our law, Jesus said, the woman was caught in the act of adultery, huh? She was, huh? Go ahead, tell you what, go ahead and stone her. Hmm? Go ahead and stone her. You that are without sin, pick it up and start hitting her. So there's only one that was there that was able to pick up and stone the woman. And it definitely ain't you. Most of you people are stoning people and you guilty as hell of your own sins. You breaking the whole law your whole self and you, look, you put yourself in a position to think you have the audacity, the arrogance and the preposterous way that you have in yourself to believe that you have become a judge in Israel. I tell you what, you judge your brother, you judge the law. And you're not a doer, but a judge. Now you're judging Yahweh himself. Smart people now. Smart folks. You can tell that some of you ain't reading the book. If you're reading it, you're just looking for the stuff you're looking for. But it ain't sinking in. Not by a long shot, it ain't. Read on. Because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the height. Uriah, Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith Yahweh. Behold, I will raise up evil. Now wait a minute. He's taking Uriah the Hittite wife to be his wife. Is that right? Now think about this. We, and it, there wasn't no marriage ceremony in here. See, you don't bother. You don't touch men's wives. The only women in Israel that you can touch are virgins. Is that right? Yes, Widows, yes, divorcees. Yes, sir. Period. Period. Look at them looking. Mm -hmm. Did I say something wrong? No, no, Why? Wow, the commandment said you should not commit adultery. And adultery begins where? In the heart. I wonder how many of you are touching somebody's husbands and wives without the physical act taking place. You burning in your heart and lusting for that which is not lawful. Oh, I'm in the house. And let me tell you what y'all gonna judge. The thought and the intent of a man's heart. Isn't that something? Well, I never did it. He's going to judge the thought and the intent of a man. Some of you secretly got other men's wives and other women's husbands in your heart. If you are a married woman, you can't have no desire to a married man. If you're a single woman, I'm falling under the banner of the one of three I said, you can have a desire to any man you want. Because a man has no limitation on the amount of wives. It just said, don't marry many of them. And what's that number? 900? Saul had a ceiling? 800 of them? I don't know. I know David had about 18 in all. I guess that's the good enough number, right? Islam limits you to four. Hell, I suggest with the way women are today, how in the hell can you handle two or three of them? That's not an insult to the good ones. See, there are good women out there. I'm telling you what's going to happen here. See, all the good women are going to be saddled up with the good men. And all the shit women are going to be saddled up with the shit men. That's what's going to happen. Be they monoligamy 
or in polygyny. Whatever way it's going to be. Hallelujah. And you can have all the fun you want. Well, Pastor Dow, you shouldn't use that word. I repent. I'm sorry. All the doo-doo women. Don't be settled up with the doo-doo men. That's making it plain. Y'all right? It's just a fact. See, Yahweh has, as a matter of fact, he is offended at David's conduct with transgressing his law. He's the king. He the one supposed to, if anybody's supposed to be representing and supporting his law, it's supposed to be David. And if you get you start transgressing, the whole nation going to start. You can't fear me, the whole nation is not going to fear me. You despise me, the whole nation is going to despise me, David. I mean, I thought, what did the king do to the, to, to the wife that said, I ain't coming to the banquet so you can put me on sport? Even the heathens did this. His advisors told him, clearly said, look at here, we got a situation here, king. You want to put her away. Because if you don't put her away, this woman is teaching all the nations to rebel against their husbands and not respect them. So we're going to seek out a wife for you. And let your heart pick the one you want. And who did he end up with? Esther. Look at that. That comes from an heathen edict. See, that's more than what meets the eye when you read these passages. That's why you have to have a, a, a good, complete understanding of the Torah. You need to know the mind of Yahweh in order to answer these things right here. Because it's just not one isolated incident right here. This is bigger than what you're reading on the pages right here. People are going to start saying, hey, sure, if David can do it, I can do it too. Read on. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor and he shall lie with thy wives That in the sounds sun. like some of the curses that was, going, was mentioned in Deuteronomy 28 as well. Yes, sir. So you see what happens, right? Okay, you're going to despise me? Good, now I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to you. Yeah. Old king. Yeah. I promise one thing, David ain't got the attitude of something you got. You'll sit there and try to spurn put your finger up to him where the hell with you I'm going to here to serve day God oh you won't say it with your lips just watch your life though you won't say it with your lips watch your life though I ain't nobody gonna fight with y'all I promise you that and win who's the fool that will contend with the most high read and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son for thou didst it secretly. What are you going to do? But I will do this thing before all Israel and I, before the sun. I got a Nimbus out there saying, if y'all going to do police, why don't you just bring it out in the open? If I was going to do police, why I got to tell you, you don't know me. There's, there's, the world has got, just in America, there's 360 million people in America. Do you think everybody know I'm married? Do you think, does everybody in America know me? Do you think they care to know me? If I took five wives, I wouldn't tell you. Why should I tell you to give you some fodder to help damn your soul? You should be thinking, yeah, I'm helping you to keep your, your wicked mouth and tongue you can't control. Come on, bring it up, bro. Devil. Somebody got to be love you more than you hate yourself. Is it getting hot in here? That's exactly what's going on. I don't have to answer to nobody but the king. Last time I checked, I was the authority here in this assembly. Does that mean that I, does that mean I don't have accountability? No. That's why we have elders. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Ain't, ain't too many hallelujahs on it. Ain't too many hallelujahs on that one. 
There ain't too many hallelujahs on that one, is it? Oh, we love We love to praise his name. Now we, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right. Uh and you, you get an opportunity to judge my words. Judge my words and then see. Come judge. Can't do nothing to your minds right now because most of you just have gone. But we all going to stand before the king. Yeah, we are. We're going to give an account. Oh, promise. Yes, we are. Nobody going to escape. Read. And David said unto Nathan. Oh, boy. I have sinned against Yahweh. I have what? Sinned against Yahweh. I have sinned against. See, David, the one thing he did have was a plow of a heart. He ain't like you people. You, when you sin and then you get, you know, Yah calls you on it, you, you get rebellious. You start manifesting stubbornness. Start back talking and, and, and crawdadding and justifying. And David just said, I've sinned. This is the one who wrote the Psalms. The one who said that even the heavens of the heavens can't contain me. He knew what he's up against. Read on. And Nathan said unto David, mm -hmm. Yahweh also hath put away thy sin. Now look at this. Just that quick. Why? Because David is a man after whose own heart? Yahweh. Just that quick, Yah forgave David of murder and adultery. But he didn't remove the judgment. That's why I keep telling y'all. Remember I told y'all along, he will in no wise acquit the guilty. Y'all remember, remember that, right? You're going to pay. Oh, you're going to get forgiven, forgiven, but you're going to pay for what you've done. And that includes every out of word. You're going to pay. See, what we want to do is cash checks. <laughs> that's what we want to do. Yeah, that's the way he put it. We want to write checks that are behind can't cash. And some of us so dumb, stupid, and ignorant, we do that all through life. That's why the Bible tells you in a nutshell, just learn how to keep your mouth shut until you can gain control of it. Bitter and sweet all not to flow from the same fountain. Now let me tell you about true forgiveness. Here we go. True forgiveness. See, we, we understand after being involved in the deliverance ministry, we know what forgiveness is, right? But true forgiveness is, who wants to know what true forgiveness is? All right, now watch this. I'm going to you, I guarantee you got a hallmark answer. If I tell you, if I ask you, if I ask you, how do you know that you're really truly forgiven and I know what you're going to say because you've been taught by me? I already know what you're going to say. Huh? Give me the answer. No more pain. See what I tell you. All right, let's, let's add some more on to that. There's already been in the book all this time. All right. Ain't nothing under there. Y'all want to hear it? Yes, sir. True forgiveness come if you want to learn how to forgive and to forgive the way Yahweh forgives is when you forget. Now let's test this thing according to the word. He said you're going to separate your sins from what? As far from the east to the west. He said your sins and iniquities I will remember no more. That's the reason why many of you have reoccurring problems. That's why many of you relapse in your nature. Oh, wait a minute. Can't nobody forgive like he can. Huh? But you have his spirit, you can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ain't that true? How you think you're going to get in the kingdom? He don't have no memory of the mess you've been. So y'all's even going to wipe his own mind from you. And just remember the good things about you. So when he told David, I put that sin away from me, I don't want to remember this. See, I told this thing is bigger. <laughs> we ain't even made it. Dang it, we are our one service already. Hadn't even got past three passages of scripture. But when you read it, you can read it every bit of 20 seconds and you're done. You got the full understanding, all the revelation, all the knowledge. You are the epitome of consciousness. And it's taking me all this time to explain it. It's amazing, isn't it? 
That's remarkable. You really truly forgive, you forget. That way you won't have any records of wrongs. Like you love trumping and going back to whenever something goes awry. You know, you can't deal with the here and now. You always got to pull something back up from the past. to let, And then what it is is reminding you that you never really truly forgiven. Mm. And let me uh, quote what the Apocrypha said. I'm going to have paraphrase if I understand, okay? Do not get in front of a man or a woman that has turned from sin. But remember this. We all are worthy of death. Then you want me to quote it verbatim? <laughs> I mean, we, these things slip. It's remarkable, isn't it? Well, y'all really, too much is given? Why do you think so many people are getting cut off? They've had much forgiven and then they turn around and they can't perform. They simply just can't perform it. Too hurt, too bitter. And all that, you still had not changed y'all's kingdom. One bit. Read on. Thou shalt not die. How be it? Because by this And that's an interesting statement. Because everything he did, all was death. You commit adultery, what does the law say? Death. You take another man's life, what does the law say? Death. And look at y'all, having mercy. Having mercy. Whew. See, this thing is loaded. Read on. How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion. Oh, here it is. Look at look at all these nations. Look at the with us, we're gonna we're gonna quote the nations that we've given great occasion. Huh? The hypocrites. The people that's full of jealousy and envy. The Baptists, the Catholics, the Christians, the Muslims, the Messianics. They can't wait. The heathens. <laughs> we giving them great occasion if we did any of these things. You know what that occasion is? Why in the world I want to serve the Yah of Israel if the people themselves don't have any respect for him? See, many of you, the way you carry yourself, you are causing and preventing people that would come to the Messiah. You're preventing them from coming. By the way you live your life and the way you run your mouth. People look at you and say, why in the hell would I want to turn around and join something like that when I see you? This thing is big. This is huge. Read on. Thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of Yahweh mm. to blaspheme. To what? To blaspheme. Yep, and they're going to be mocking him and jeering him and deriding and chiding him just because of you. The way you carry yourself. Read on. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Why? They say, boy, now the nations are going to change their mind. Because they say, this man did this, and this was the judgment. Your God don't play. <laughs> Your God. So, But see, you want to go sin and get passes. You go sin and think ain't nothing going to be required for you. And you don't understand why you're schizophrenic. You don't understand why you can't cope with life. You don't understand why your nerves are half shot. Your blood pressure's gone through the roof. Oh, hallelujah. You're full of oppression, depression, obsession. You don't understand the spiritual battle that's going on with you now. And here I am shouting to the rooftop trying to tell you exactly what's going on. And you still continue on your wicked way. It's a sad shame to be involved in a ministry like this and you don't get better, but you get worse. <laughs> because when an unclean spirit gone out of a man, he do seek at rest, don't he? Yes, See, the problem is, is that you've had many spirits cast out of you and you're getting worse. Why do you think all these people falling away? Because they came and toyed around with y'all. They want to get delivered of demons and get delivered of devils and stuff, but they didn't want to change their life. They didn't want to repent. And they despise and mock the commandments of y'all. And so now he got them out in the wilderness of sin to kill them. First that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. 
That's what's really truly going on. And I'm telling you what we've done lost in this generation is his fear. And we need his fear ever before our eyes. That's what we need. We don't need to forget the way that he judges matters. And because people are not rolling over croaking and dying today physically, they think that people ain't dying. First that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. So as a sow that was washed returns to a wallet in the mire. The dog to his vomit. Isn't that something? Yeah, I like it too. And the food to his father. <laughs> you tell me, why the hell? Only thing you can, only joy you can find in life is when you laughing your ass off about something, but you can't have a lick of joy when it comes to Yah's word. Right. You foolish ass piece of crap. I get great joy out of worshiping the Father. Great joy out of his word. I can laugh with the best of it, but you know I don't run around looking for the next opportunity. To <laughs> all that is is a cover up for pain. That's all it is. It's to deflect the minds of the unlearned. Who have no discernment whatsoever at all. Y'all hear me? Read on, bro. Saying, what's taking you so long? And Nathan departed unto his house. And Yahweh struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was very sick. David therefore besought Yahweh for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. Well, anyway, y'all know the rest of the story, right? You can fast, you can pray, but you're wasting your time. <laughs> Yahweh's a man after Yah David is a man after Yahweh's own heart, and he still took the child. In other words, Israel, you're not going to practice despising Yah's commandment, and you're going to give great occasion to all these other people who got their eyes on you because you claim you've been converted. You claim you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. You claim you keep his commandments. And they're going to sit and watch you despise his commandments. And they're going to say, I ain't going over that. Look at him. Not with them pratting hypocrites. You got that right. Many of you got a lot of blood on your hands. You're concerned about Pastor Dow. You better be concerned about yourself. Pastor Dow doing fine. I'm doing real good. I could be a whole lot better for I get a little aches and pains on the hip, but that's sowing and reaping as well. Yes, sir. I get a little healing, pow, come I know exactly what it is. Yes, that's what you get for being a fool. Yes, but I ain't complaining. Yes, come on, I think you got your answer. Sure. Now, this was thus said, Yahweh. Elohim of Israel. It's amazing, isn't it? And did y'all know? No, you don't know. I'm gonna tell you anyway. During the Messiah's days, during Jesus' day, that's all Israel was. Is was a polygynous nation. His problem was with adultery and murder. So whether you like it or not, it is not a sin. I didn't say you had to do it. You don't have to. You can pick and choose. But go ahead and step into the arena, the lines then, and condemn that which Yah allows and see what happens. You're going to find you taking on some natures that you can't handle. And they're going to take you far away from the Elohim of Yisrael.
Uh-oh, look at him looking. <laughs>